Susadai, or hello in English. My name is Jani Walker. Welcome to the Miss Universe Cambodia 2022 preliminary recap. If you enjoy pageant related content and vlogs, I hope that you'll choose to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you really love the channel and want to know other ways to support it, you can check out my merch store or the super thanks button. I would greatly appreciate that. Before we jump right into it, there's a few things you're going to want to know before you watch this recap about the preliminary competition. First, they do not compete in swimsuit. I did not realize that. Instead, they compete and they showcase their national costume as well as evening gown. Since national costume is not a scoring component for the overall title, I'm not going to focus on national costume today in this episode. Instead, we are going to talk about the evening gown competition because that does count when it comes to selecting the new title holder. Just looking at this year's competition in comparison to recent years, I think that the staging is already improving as well as the overall level of competition that the contestants are really bringing to the stage. It's becoming more and more competitive in terms of hair, makeup, styling, walk, wardrobe, all of those things, which is wonderful to see. This year, there were three hosts for the show and there were 20 contestants. I'm not sure how they qualified to become an official top 20 contestant, but if you know, then please share that in the comments below. The other quick thing I'm gonna say is I'm very excited for Cambodia because I mentioned them in recent years. I thought that they're one of those countries to really be looking out for because I feel like they're pouring into their program and into their contestants and their title holders. And they're one of the ones that have always been on my edge for favorites at Miss Universe in recent years. So I've been watching and paying attention, which is why I'm excited to recap this preliminary competition. Now I'm gonna share about my favorites in no particular order. I'm going to make mention of contestant number one because she did something that I've never seen at a national pageant of this level before, and that was use crutches. So clearly she was injured. I have to give this contestant a big round of applause for getting up on that stage and still competing regardless of crutches. That is not easy to do. Very excited for her just for getting up there. But I will say from a judge's perspective, it is very, very difficult to make an assessment for a score because you really don't know after she heals what type of performance she would put forward at Miss Universe. So I'm, I don't know what's gonna happen for her because I think it's a kind of a toss up with the judges, but I will say that the hair, the makeup and the gown was perfect on her and the gentleman who escorted her on stage. It was really fun, honestly, to kind of watch him. He seemed to be blushing a little bit. I think he was loving it. I think he was loving being in that spotlight with her. I do wish though that he would have stepped away for just a moment. I know it's a little tricky to do. She doesn't have much balance right now on one foot, but I wish he would have stepped away a bit out of frame so we could just focus on her. Contestant number six had a gown that was perfect for her. And so obviously that's gonna be something that can kind of play into your scoring. It's never the gown itself, but it's really how you're wearing it. And I thought that she wore this gown so well. And, and the performance overall was good, but I will say that I think that she can relax her facial expressions a little bit more. I felt that sometimes it looked like she was thinking on stage, like overthinking while she was walking instead of being present and living in the moment. Number 16, she had me worried for a minute when she walked out with this blue feather thing because I've seen contestants, they'll walk out and you expect them to remove that and they don't. So I was like, please, please remove that thing. I, I, I like it as an accessory, but it's hiding her. So she walked out, she did a really great reveal. And then after that reveal, the performance just got better and better. The facials were there. I would say that she really made this performance her own because in some performances you look at them and you're like, oh, I've seen that turn. I've seen that pose because the pose of the turn was so iconic from another contestant who usually will have won a large national or international title, but I didn't see that here for number 16. And I think that's a great compliment to her is that she was very much herself. Queens and contestants, if you're watching this because you're looking to improve for your next competition, this is a great start, but don't forget to practice for your interview. And that's exactly why I created Rehearsed to Relatable, an online course that you could take anytime, anywhere, where you can learn how to create a personal brand that's gonna make you stand out in the interview room. And this is gonna help you to answer all those basic questions like tell me about yourself that you should be prepared to answer in your interview. Contestant number two walked with ease. This was a beautiful gown on her. I especially love the cape. And we're seeing this trend of these faux two-piece gowns a lot. We primarily saw them at the Miss Grand competition. So it's interesting to see it cross over now into the Miss Universe realm. And I'll say that if she has a good interview and 
I think her swimsuit performance should be at least decent just by looking at her gown walk. If she has a good interview, I can see her moving on into the semifinals, but I don't know how they're breaking that up for this year. I don't know if they're doing a top 10 or what that, what that cut is going to look like. Number eight wore a very safe evening gown. This is a similar style to what we see in the US a lot a lot at Miss USA state pageants or really any Miss division pageant. Of course, it makes sense. It's a beautiful silhouette, but it wasn't something that I would expect to see for this competition, although it still looked great on her. And I will say that the performance was good to it, but it complimented her. She did wonderful, but I would say that my jaw didn't drop for this performance. I, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, there was something so unique or so different about it, which there doesn't always have to be. I think that this performance could potentially move her forward. If you'll be tuning in for the final pageant for Miss Universe Cambodia, comment queen down below. Contestant number three, oh my gosh. I love when combinations of colors are done very well for gowns and this pink and gold was unexpected, but the way that it was beaded was so beautiful. That was one of the first things that immediately stood out to me when she stepped on stage. But I will say that she had a really great performance to complement this gown. The hair, the makeup, she's very, very facially stunning. The thing that I would work on though leading into the finals are the arm transitions. So I noticed when she walked up at first, hands were on the hips and then she dropped her hands like she was throwing a heavy weight down in the gym. So we want to have those really smooth arm trans transitions that aren't sudden but also aren't over delayed when we're on stage because that just draws the attention to the hands instead of the face. So that's one thing that can be adjusted for finals. Number nine, oh, this gown. I love the fringe. I love the fringe. It didn't hide any of her shape. It was just beautiful. It was complimentary. And so I don't know how her communication skills are, but if they are decent and if she can have a decent swimsuit performance, I can see her moving on to at least a semifinal. Number four had a beautiful gown on her. I have to say this purple jewel tone, it's rare to see on the pageant stage, but it was perfect for her. It really reminded me of the Mark Bumgarner gown that was used at Miss USA 2021 by Miss Nebraska and as well as by Sorsagon at Bini Bini Filipinas in 2019, I believe. It was this beautiful pink gown, so it was very reminiscent of that. But what made this one different were the sheer gloves or sleeves that were added that were stoned, so it was a fun touch. The one thing I would change on her styling though was the clip in her hair. I just thought that it wasn't necessary, especially since she had the large necklace. Number 18. Before I talk about all that I love, I wanna talk about just one adjustment I would love to make for this. So this slim fitted gown type of style with a very short hemline, if you're gonna shorten the hemline for these styles, please don't wear a giant platform heel. I just think it's just not as elongating, not as sleek, it's distracting, it's just really unnecessary. So if you're gonna wear the platform heel that's gonna be that large, then make sure your hemline goes all the way down to the floor. And if you are gonna wear the short hem, just go with a smaller platform. Not saying you can't do any platform, but I would keep it less than an inch under the ball of the foot. It's just gonna be a lot more sleek. So that's my one little styling change I would like to see happen. But this gown, so beautiful. I don't really even know what the sleeves are made out of. I don't know if those are sequins. I don't know if those are pieces of metal. I couldn't see close enough, but whatever it is, I loved it. And oh my gosh, the styling, the straight hair, the, the pop of color on the lips, the walk, the posing, all of it. She's definitely in my top five. Number 15, I love gowns that have a cultural influence. And this gown to me was very Kamaya. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm trying. I really liked her walk though. The walk had a really beautiful sway to it. Very similar to Hana's Miss Universe 2021. That's great. The one thing I would change here though is add in a few more smiles into the facial expression changes. I thought that she has a beautiful smile and I'd just like to see a little bit more of it. Those were my top 10 favorites for this year's competition. I appreciate you joining me for this episode as we near 100,000 subscribers. Oh my gosh, we're getting so close. I'm so excited. I appreciate all the support, encouragement, the shares of the videos are a huge help to me. And don't forget that if there's anything that you wanna see on the channel that I haven't covered yet, feel free to leave those requests in the comments. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, you wanna make sure to do so so you don't miss out on any new episodes. And speaking of new episodes, 
videos. If you wanna see any of my recent Miss Universe coverage for the 2022 pageant, then you can start by checking out these other recent episodes. Thank you so much though for tuning into this one and I hope you're gonna come back for a lot more.